Welcome to the channel guys. Now, if you're new here, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. And if you like this video, which I really hope you do, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It enables me to grow the channel and bring you content in the future, which I hope you will also enjoy. Now, this video today is about a watch that was kindly sent to me on loan by Steel Dive UK. Now, I was so excited. It's my first chance to get a watch for free, be it on loan, to review for you guys. This is a big deal for the channel because I got in touch with Steel Dive UK and I said, here's some stuff I've done already. What do you think? And they were very happy and they said, why don't you choose a watch that you want to review next? And lo and behold, I got the last one in stock to review and it's this watch. I was so excited to do it. I said, I really want to review a bronze homage watch, which is unique and slightly different to what you normally get out there in the market. And Steel Diver is a really up and coming brand and is very exciting. Now, I was so excited to get this watch because it combines many things. It's bronze. It's an homage to an incredibly historic watch design from a big brand, the 50 Fathoms from 1952. And this is an exciting homage to that. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail in this video behind the design history of this watch and why it's nice to be able to get a bit of that design history on your wrist for about 150, 60 pounds. It's excellent value. Whereas a real 50 Fathoms, we're talking well over 10,000 pounds and upwards. So the average Joe like you and me, let's see if we can have something that looks very similar, but isn't too much of a copy for a reasonable amount of money. So let's enjoy this review and see what we find. Thanks for watching. So back in the early 50s in France, they were requiring in the military for those divers going down to 50 fathoms, which is almost 100 meters, they were needing a watch that could take the pressures at that depth. Now this was a proper tall watch because it had to go with all the other equipment they had and they needed it because they didn't have the dive computers that we have nowadays. It was an important piece of equipment for them when they were diving and it had requirements that were specified to do the task at hand. Now, it became very popular because it did its job very well, it performed very reliably, and has barely changed over the many decades since its origins. It's deemed a military spec watch, a tool watch, because it was conceived for the military, for combat people, and specifically in France, frogmen, those underwater warriors, if you will. And these have become very desirable because Initially, these kind of watches were only available in dive shops a long time ago, and now they're extremely valuable, very precious. And this one is about £12,000, and they do other iterations which are over £20,000. They're highly sought after historic pieces, definitely worthy of a collection. So here we have it, guys. This is the packaging it came in. Lovely toughened case and gives reassurance that you know when it's going to be delivered the watch should be nice and safe inside and it is because it's all foam padded on the inside which is great and here we have it now this is what came with the watch i got from steeldiveuk.com these guys here now you don't always get extra straps and things with these steel dives but these guys are very generous um and it came with a quick release genuine leather strap. Very nice, complements the design and it comes with this very nice Steel Dive branded rubber strap. So what I'm gonna do now, is so I'm gonna go through, I'll get this out of the way. So my initial observations, that's the first thing I want to discuss with you. Then I'm gonna go through the spec. Then I'm going to discuss uh, where I got this show you how easy it is to find this and give you a little bit more information about steeldiveuk.com. I would then discuss what I'd like to change about this watch, uh, show you the loom and some outdoor shots so you get an idea of how good this watch is in different light conditions. And then I'm actually going to show you some alternatives to this uh, because this is deemed 
a bit of a mil spec, which is military spec watch. Well, its origins of its design are mil spec. And I'll show you some other alternatives, both entirely different, to add to your collection. Because I think this is a very interesting watch you should consider for your collection. So the first thing I want to discuss is going to be my initial impressions. Well, pictures don't do this watch justice. They definitely don't. It's got a lot of striking features. As soon as you open the box, get out of the packaging, it's a very surprising watch. My wife was very impressed with this watch. She's not really into watches at all. She goes, well, that is really nice. I'm, I'm not just saying that. She was, she was genuinely impressed. And she said she liked the bronze because it's unusual. You don't see that too much. And I would agree. So my initial impressions were the lovely sapphire. As you can see it's, it's raised. Has a bit of distortion. Beautiful. Now, it also has that striking bluey purple tint AR coating. Now that's something I would mildly criticize as being a bit of a clashing color to the rest of the colorways on this watch. So again, it's not a deal breaker, but it, it does add some interest to the watch, but the color is a little unusual for this overall design and color theme. So that was my initial thing I saw. It's the first thing that smacks you in the face when you look at it is that AR coating. So you can get, get a bit of perspective of it there. See? Really, really bright. Now, the other thing is the initials, initially this came out of the packaging on the leather strap. Now I have a lot of experience with leather straps. This is average. I've seen better, I've seen worse, but for the money it's acceptable. But the reason why I say it's average is, even though it's soft, it's almost like suede. But yeah, you see, it's very thick. And the stitching is very white. Considering there's lots of cream and more mid-tone colors on the watch and oranges, things like that, the white uh, is a bit of a clash. It doesn't quite work. I think it would have been better with a cream stitch on there. But that's just me being extra fussy. And the stitching looks quite neat and tidy. It's not bad. But I thought, seeing as this is traditionally a dive watch and a tool watch. Let's get it on a strap. I know it's going to be acceptable for all conditions. Be it a hot, sweaty day, you're going to jump in the pool, everything. You don't have to worry about the strap because it's rubber. And the rubber is excellent on this. It's very supple, very comfortable. And I love the branding. I have no criticisms other than two things. One is this isn't bronze, the buckle. And two, there's no taper to this. It's 20 all the way down. Other than that, I still think it is very good. The other thing that really popped was how orange these indices are. They are absolutely loaded with C3 Super Luminova. And later on, I'm gonna show you the Loom Shop. And I just love how powerful the glow is from all the indices the hands and the loom in the seconds uh, hand there. So it's fantastic. It's really, really good loom, good quality. It's It lasts a long time and doesn't take much exposure to light for it to be charged up really nicely. And it really, it's an unusual color. I don't see orange very often. And I love that. I know it's, some would deem it faux patina, but for me, it's unusual and striking enough to be a worthy addition to this watch. And then the loom, the other thing that I noticed as well is this has got a loomed bezel. Every painted aspect of this bezel has a minty green loom in that. So you've got a contrast between the orange and the green uh, for the illumination. It's fantastic. That really surprised me because one of the first things I do when I get a new watch that is supposedly got good loom is straight on it, let's see how good the loom is. So that was an initial impression it was very, very good. And the finishing is the next thing I want to talk about. Now, bronze, this is, it says underneath here, the CUSN8 bronze. Now bronze, without going into too much detail, has been an alloy that has been made for thousands of years. People mix copper with um, a small percentage of another metal. Nowadays, it's most often mixed with tin. 
Now this just changes the properties slightly of the copper, makes it more machinable, workable, etc. And bronze is a beautiful material for a, a dive watch specifically because bronze was traditionally used in the 1800s because of its malleability and its uh, aversion to rust in the old style aqualung uh, helmets. You know, the, the divers used during um, war efforts and things, people wear those funky looking helmets, the one you saw me wearing at the beginning of the video. And um, that was a similar concept to this, this material. And I like the, the fact that the, they are using that material in watches. And I would say it's best used on a dive watch because that's the most appropriate type of watch to have bronze on. The beauty of bronze on a watch like this is it won't rust, but it does form a beautiful patina. So if you've got an homage to a watch that is from the 1950s, and you want it to have a more antique look, already there's a slight patina forming on this brand new watch. And the reason why I know that is because when you look at the finish of the case on the outside, and then when you look at the inner ring inside the dial area, it's a lot brighter because it hasn't been exposed to air and moisture and skin oils and things like that to allow it to patina. So you have an option to let the bronze continue to patina and discolor. And if that's your style, I think it looks gorgeous. It really does. It adds such an interesting finish to the watch. But if you want to refresh the look again and rejuvenate it back to fresh bronze again, vinegar, white vinegar, things like that. If you, you can immerse it in that and clean it and it doesn't affect or damage the watch in any way, it just is a safe, clean way to remove any patina that is, that's formed on the bronze and you can make it look good again. So that's a little bit of a, a nerdy fact overload for regards to bronze and its use in a watch. And why I think it's appropriate for this type of watch because it's from an era where there was the beginning of military spec watches for combat members of uh, the forces and frogmen initially in France. And it didn't originally come in bronze. I just like that there's, if it's we're paying tribute or we're having an homage, the thing I like about the steel dive is they are combining a traditional material that has been used in diving equipment with a homage to a tool watch that has great historic significance in the watch world. And I think that works really well. And why I like this watch and why it's so unique and interesting and definitely is worthy of your attention. So as I said, the finishing is extremely good. And by finishing, I mean, there's no rough edge or sharp edges to worry about that I felt a lot worse. All the brushing is so uniform and smooth. Detailing of everything that has got engraving or etching has been done exceptionally well. It's very neat very clear, there are no mistakes, it's all spelt correctly. You wouldn't believe how many watches have spelling mistakes or incorrect, inconsistent information. It's nice to see they've got that right. And so I'm gonna move on to the tactile things because it's all well and good you looking at the videos and seeing all the beautiful aesthetics of a watch, but it's worth you knowing all the bits you're gonna fiddle with. And that's gonna be on a watch like this, it's gonna be the bezel, and the crown. I'll start with the bezel. The bezel is 120 click and has exceptional feel. It's got the right amount of weight. There's very, there's no play to be actually. I mean, the watch is wobbling, not the bezel. It's exceptionally good, very precise. It's got a lovely feel to it. So you won't be disappointed in the bezel action on this specific watch. Um, the crown, it's a good size crown. I'd say that's about a six mil, maybe a bit more, maybe eight mil. I've measured that. It's one of the few things I haven't measured on this. But because it's got the NH35 Malaysian made Seiko movement in there, it's much the same with any other watch with this movement. The winding action is going to feel the same and the feel of the pop of the crown coming out for the date adjust and then the time adjust is always going to be the same. So that's a positive. The one thing I did notice that was slightly unusual with this crown is it's a slightly wonky alignment. It's 
uh, to exaggerate, it's down that way a bit. So sometimes it doesn't thread in. See there, it's not biting very smoothly. It doesn't just go in straight away. To give you a contrast, my other steel dive, that threads in and out just immediately. There's zero uh, feeling of cross-threading going on. So, and that's, this, the quality control on this is, is exceptional. So I'll put this in the same category, apart from the only thing I've found is literally that crown action is sometimes it see that screwed in really easily that time so that for me is not anything to worry about because it still screws in it still feels good it's just i think it may be because it's brand new it needs to just run a few threads we could drop a bit of oil on the uh, thread thread um of the where the crown screws in so now i've run through the tactile and the aesthetics a little bit. I'm going to move on to the spec. I'm going to fly through that so you've got an idea of what, what to expect with this. You have a ceramic and loomed bezel insert. As I've said, you have the 120 click bezel. It's sapphire glass with AR coating. I wouldn't say that's domed. I think that's, I think people would say it's boxed, but the edges are polished. Screwing crown. The back is 316L stainless steel, so you don't get any bronze patina on your skin. Some people have a reaction to bronze, but there's, this doesn't make any real contact with your skin because of that. I've already discussed the type of bronze case and bezel and crown. And then there's the straps, the rubber strap, and then it comes with a leather strap, it's 20 mil log width. The loom is C3 Super Loom, the case diameter is 41 mil, so I'd say it's a mid-size. Then the thickness is relatively chunky at 15 millimeters, and that does include the domed glass or the raised sapphire glass. And the weight is a, a substantial, considering it's on a non-metal strap or bracelet, 115 grams. But it's very comfortable on the wrist. The gentle curve of the lugs is really good. It conforms to your wrist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it on my wrist and then you'll get a better idea of how it looks. And there you go. It sits very comfortably. As you can see, the lugs conform very nicely with the shape of your wrist. Some watches, because this length of lug to lug is quite long, approximately 52 millimeters but because the lugs taper down it doesn't look too tall on the wrist or too long either so proportions are very good so now i'm going to move on to a clip from steeldiveuk.com's website and showing the range that they have on offer and i'm going to briefly discuss the benefits of buying a steel dive watch directly from a uk supplier as opposed to getting it from anywhere else. If you live in the UK, this is definitely worth you watching. Now, if you check out steeldiveuk.com's website, there's a lovely little bit of history there, information about Steel Dive. But this company, as they will say in here, they are the sole distributors for UK and Europe. And they've managed to secure prices which are even more competitive than buying from Steel Dive on AliExpress. You won't have to pay customs. You won't have to wait for ages for it to arrive. I got mine in two days and that blew my mind how quick it was and the price I paid was exceptional. And not only that, it was even cheaper than on eBay. So go straight to steeldive.com, uk.com, and you will get a really good service I bought from them before communicating at all. They didn't know I was a YouTuber or anything like that. And I got my watch in two days and it was so, so quick. And I was so impressed, I let them know. And I think you should deal with these guys. So now you know where to get this watch. If you're interested, there is something really exciting you must know. That Steel Dive UK have been very kind to offer a promotion code to you guys. Any Steel Dive watch from steeldiveuk.com. If at the checkout you put in the code watchmewithwatches5, you'll get five pounds off. 
and that's five pounds off an already excellent value watch. That is fantastic. And I'm so grateful for Steel Dive UK offering that discount. And it's a little gift for you guys as well for watching and enjoying these watches. Now we've got that out of the way, I'm gonna move on to the last few bits, which will be what I would change about this watch. And then we can show the loom and the outdoor shots. And I'm gonna finish off with a few little alternatives just to get you thinking. Now, the things I would change are, there's a unusual clash of colors. I think they could tweak the colors. First of all, there is that colored AR. It doesn't really work with, you've got cream paint, in here, which doesn't contrast well with the quite strong orange of the loomed indices and hands, etc. And you've got a brushed coppery color handset, which does look lovely, but it, again, it's another color that's not quite the same as the all the other colors. Then you've got the bronze, which is an ever changing color. Then you've got the strap. Then you've got this stainless steel colored buckle. There's a lot going on. I think it could be balanced a bit more by having the colors complementing each other a bit better or having more uniformity with the colors. And then we've also got a white date wheel and that's no fault of anyone's because the date wheel on an H35 is that color. It would have been awesome if it could have been the opposite way, black with white numbers. But these are tweaks that I'm just, in my opinion, I'm suggesting. And I think you guys should let us know as well what you would tweak about this. Be very interested to hear. So now we're gonna move on to seeing that loom in a little bit more detail, some outdoor shots, catch it in different lighting conditions. Now, you've got a thoroughly good idea now that this is a modern interpretation of a mil spec watch, a tall watch, a dive watch. Now, what would be two quirky alternatives that I would suggest to this watch to have in your collection as well, with a bit of history and are, are quite interesting. First one I'm gonna bring over from here is Vostok Amphibia. I've done a nearly 20 minute video on the history of Vostok and the Amphibia. Please check it out. It's one of my videos in one of my playlists. Check it out because you get a better idea of why this is a proper tool watch. There's so much interesting history behind this and there's a huge modding scene behind it as well. This is a heavily modified example, but this is a tank and it's so much fun. So that's one thing I would recommend. And they are, again, they're excellent value. You can fully modify one of these up to this standard for the same price as this watch. That's why I'm likening it to this. And then what about this beastie? 200 meters, toughest watch in the world, light as a feather, you can do anything with it. That's a tall watch. And I know the bad guys and the good guys in all the war zones in the world are rocking these bad boys because they just need something that's gonna be tough. And that's these watches, they're tough. 300 meters water resistant, 200, 200. They're designed to be a tall, Why not get something with a bit of vintage feel and it's made of bronze? I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's been a pleasure making it for you. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already. And then um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one, which won't be long. So bye for now.